meeting together in the headquarters of the BBVA Foundation in Madrid to deliberate and decide, the committee has resolved to grant the BBVA Foundation Frontiers of Knowledge Award in the Biology and Biomedicine category in its 16th edition to the following candidates. Franz Ulrich Hartl, Arthur Horwich, Katsutoshi Mori and Peter Walter. Proteins adopt specific three-dimensional structures to fulfill their function. This is achieved in cells during protein synthesis with the help of a family of proteins called chaperones. Franz Ulrich Hartl and Arthur Horwich discovered the first cellular pathway that instructs protein folding, which includes the discovery of the HSP60 chaperone. When this process fails or the protein synthesis machinery overloads the chaperone pool, cells have a mechanism that targets misfolded proteins for degradation. This process, known as the unfolded protein response, was discovered by Katsutoshi Mori and Peter Walter. Collectively, their groundbreaking findings revealed how cells control protein biology genesis and degradation central not only for the physiology, but also disease pathogenesis and therapy. What are chaperones and why are they so important to understand both human biology as well as disease? Yeah, molecular chaperones are important parts of all of our cells. They help protein molecules to fold into their correct shape. Proteins are long chains of amino acids. And in order to fulfill their various functions in the biology of the cell, they need to fold into a well-defined three-dimensional pattern. This is similar to an origami reaction, but at microscopic scale. The chaperones help other protein molecules to fold properly. And in particular, they prevent misfolding of proteins and clumping together into aggregates. This is important because these aggregates can be toxic to cells and they can elicit various diseases, mostly neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. What have been the most important clinical application of your basic research up to now? And what are the most promising therapeutic advances for the future? The research on chaperones has important implications in medicine, in particular in two areas. The first I already mentioned previously, it has to do with neurodegenerative disorders that affect the brain, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's disease and other forms, where the nerve cells suffer from the formation of protein clumps or plaques, aggregates, uh, and these cause toxic effects in cells and cause the cells to die. If we could activate molecular chaperones with small molecule drugs, we could perhaps prevent this from happening or delay it from happening. The other area concerns cancer cells. Cancer cells depend on proteins, various proteins that support their growth. And these proteins are oftentimes highly dependent on molecular chaperones. So in this case, we would actually like to inhibit the molecular chaperones and perhaps combine this with other means of chemotherapy. Could you define the HSP60 chaperone you discovered together with Professor Harold and why this mechanism is so important to understand protein folding? So work on heat shock protein 60 um, with Ulrich um, was uh, an exciting development for us. Um, it started with study of a mutant of yeast in which 
uh, we looked at proteins being imported into mitochondria. Most of the proteins that make up our energy uh, producing organelles, mitochondria, are encoded in the nucleus, translated in the cytosol, and then imported as unfolded polypeptide chains, sort of like strands of spaghetti, across the mitochondrial membranes, and then fold on the inside aspect of the mitochondria to their native active forms. We asked the question in, our, in my lab uh, with the student Ming Cheng, whether it was possible that proteins might need assistance to refold inside mitochondria. To that time, people thought it was a spontaneous event. This was based on experiments carried out in the late 50s and early 60s by Christian Anfinson and his coworkers, in which they unfolded a polypeptide ribonuclease in a test tube and asked whether it could find its way back to the native active form spontaneously, and it did. He received a Nobel Prize for that uh, spectacular experiment. What we asked was whether there was such a thing as a folding machine inside mitochondria that refolded the newly imported proteins. When we tested our uh, favorite reporter protein and one other protein, we were shocked to see that they failed to reach the native state in one of our mutants of yeast. Um, we didn't believe it and we didn't think anybody else would, uh, but a phone call from Walter Neupert and his associate or, or Ulrich and his associate Walter Neupert um, opened uh, the, the possibility that they could help us biochemically to uh, assess whether indeed we were looking at uh, uh, fully imported proteins that were failing to fold. And indeed we sent our mutant to Ulrich and he confirmed that that was the case. Um, he and his co-workers uh, then uh, proceeded to reconstitute folding by HSP60 inside mitochondria uh, and uh, um, uh, using a bacterial system. George Lorimer and his co-workers showed that um, uh, bacterial chaperonin, another ring assembly, a double ring assembly, uh, and its co-chaperone on GROW-ES could be used to refold proteins in a test tube. Um, this uh, 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 sort of summarizes the action of molecular chaperones in the cell. What is the therapeutic potential of your research to treat neurodegenerative diseases? And when do you foresee that treatment could help patients? So the implications are that there are folding assistants inside cells that bind uh, misfolded and non-native proteins, uh, and in so doing, uh, can prevent them from being uh, toxic to the cell uh, or preventing them from uh, uh, lacking any normal function. Um, so uh, overexpression of molecular chaperones that could recognize these proteins might be one way to resolve um, uh, neurodegenerative conditions. But in another instance, binding by other kinds of components may also be able to be helpful. The most dramatic being the recent use of lecanemab to bind A-beta peptides in patients with Alzheimer's, which has shown some improvement for those patients and clearing of amyloid plaques from their central nervous system. Um, so other kinds of approaches uh, to clear uh, toxic proteins may become accessible with time now. Could you explain how your research has contributed to understanding protein folding and why it has been so groundbreaking in the fields of biology and biomedicine? Deceptor type membrane proteins, as its ligand like secretive proteins, are very important for intercellular communication. They are folding the endoplasmic reticulum to exert its functions. However, under a variety of physiological and pathological conditions, correctly termed ER stress, this protein folding process is a uh, compromise. To cope with very, very problematic, problematic ER stress, essentially all eukaryotic cells are equipped with a, a system called unfold protein response, UPR. Peter Walter and I identified the molecular mechanism of the UPR and allowed many researchers to work in this field. 
what therapeutic advances have already been achieved thanks to your discoveries, and what disease do you foresee could be treated in the future as a result of your research? Small molecules that can mitigate ELCs are now used to treat liver disease and ALS. In the future, we will be able to treat various chronic diseases such as neurodegenerative disease, non-alcoholic stress hepatitis, NASH, and chronic kidney diseases. Could you define the unfolded protein response you discovered and why it is such a revolutionary discovery in biology and biomedicine? So the unfolded protein response is the cell's reaction to having proteins that need to be folded, accumulate in an um, unfinished fashion. They need attention by molecular machinery, and the unfolded protein response senses this need and then responds accordingly uh, to increase the protein folding capacity of the cell. Um, it uses an amazing mechanism, or a set of amazing mechanisms, many of them unprecedented in the cell and very unique um, in the way it transmits the information from one organelle where the accumulated uh, unfolded proteins uh, send the signal um, to then appropriate changes in the gene expression program in the cell. What is the therapeutic potential of your discoveries to treat cancer, and when do you think it could reach clinical application? So cancer cells have an intrinsic uh, problem in that they are genomically unstable. Um, they make many unfolded proteins, proteins that cannot assemble correctly, um, that need to be tended to. And the unfolded protein response now provides an inappropriate site of protection to these cells and that keeps them alive despite the fact that normally this response would be programmed for them to kill themselves. And in that respect, inhibiting that response would take away that uh, inappropriate growth advantage and allow us to affect cancer cells very selectively um, in treating the disease in, in, a, in a very broad scope. So it's uh, issues that are attaching uh, uh, to all cancer cells uh, in, of, of many different diseases. But how long it will take to develop that, um, we will we will see. We have the, the basic principles uh, of the system. We understand that inhibiting these components will be beneficial. And now we need to develop uh, appropriate uh, medicines, as uh, drugs and, and treatments uh, that are non-toxic and uh, not harmful to the, to the affected individuals. Um, and uh, this is the, the, the task of translating basic discovery and establishing of principles um, into applications so that they can help in the clinical setting.